Hi, good evening everyone. Welcome to the live Bible study of Metanoia Christian Ministries. And today is the start of the week, Monday. And I'm here with Brother Ron and Brother Eric. Uh, hi, good evening. Uh, hey, good evening everybody. Yeah. Oh, excited akong mag-share ngayong gabi. And uh, this is another, you know, it's, it's a topic na talagang sobrang foundational. And I believe every Christian should really have a genuine revelation on this. And uh, kahit na may revelation ka nito, kailangan din ma-renew yung mind natin at laging fresh to sa puso't isipan natin. Sobrang importante nitong uh, topic natin for tonight. So I'm excited to share. But uh, before that, you know, let's just let's just open up with some worship and just praise the Lord right now. All right, so worship the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome again. If you're just tuning in, welcome to our Monday night Bible study uh, here at Metanoia Christian Ministry. So I'm with Pastor Macho and Brother Eric. And uh, yeah, we're excited to share, to share this um, 
this message with you guys tonight. And um, yeah, so I hope I hope everyone's doing well. You know, tagulan na ulit. And uh, actually, mas okay na to kaysa sobrang init ng summer. Diba? <laughs> Oo nga. Kahit pa paano, maganda-ganda yung hangin. Oh, oh. Medyo, medyo better na. Yeah. You know, but um, again, guys, you know, so regardless of the season, in-season, out-of-season, kahit anong season pa yan, ang importante, yung, yung, yung renewal ng mind natin. <laughs> you know, and that's what we're doing here tonight. You know, um, we started doing this online broadcast uh Uh, early last year, um, no start ng pandemic, and you know, daming daming turo and a lot, for a lot of you guys, the stuff that we were teaching and and sharing, it, it was new, de ba? Parang ah, iba to. Ah. Depende kung anong background mo, pero for the most part, di naman lahat, but for the most part, especially if you were new to the ministry or last year lang pa yung nanonood o nag-attend, you know, a lot of the teachings sounded very new, and um, you know, so. For some time, gano naman yung journey natin. You hear the sharing, you hear the word, as bago siya. Pero ang tanong dun is, ano nangyayari pagkatapos mo manitig? Di ba? Parang, ah, okay, stored knowledge na ba yan? Okay na yan, move forward. Tapos next. You know what I mean? Kasi may seasons tayo that we gather knowledge. May seasons tayo that we, you know, we we read and read and read and read and read. Tapos mo. Yung mga commentary, yung mga books, yung mga... May mga time talagang finifeed mo sarili mo na knowledge. And then, later on, you refine those things. And later on, you know, yun nasa sort out mo kung ano talaga yung heart ni God. Pero guys, ang importante is, nare-renew ba na? Kasi hindi porke may revelation tayo noon. I mean, okay na. Di ba, Pastor Macho? Yeah. Importante talaga yan palagi. Yung renewal of mind kasi... Minsan, oh, may pundasyon ka, nandiyan yan. Pero pag nandiyan na yung atake, nandiyan na yung ano, importante, alam mo pa rin kung saan ka Especially kay identity natin kay Christ. At yung identity yun is yun yung spirit, yung walking by the spirit. Amen. Yeah. Yung ano rin, like, yeah, si Brother Eric, I, lagi kong kasama, I've heard Brother Eric preach and teach on Romans chapter 6 for so many times. You know, dami. Pero every time pinipreach niya, laging iba. Alam mo yun, same truth, pero iba eh. Alam mo yun, hindi, hindi lang yung tipong minemorize niya, ito na yun. Kasi, guys, y- yung, yung point ko, why am I sharing this? He, hindi naman porque tinuro mo yung bagay isang beses, yun na yun. You yeah. know, what we have is a progressive and a growing revelation of God's heart. And, you know, sometimes, you know, yung foundation mo becomes stronger than you. You get to see more of the same passage, more of the same truth. You know, the, the Holy Spirit just takes you deeper. So, like what I said niya, Parang sa, sa ilang taon lang magkasama kami ni Brother Eric, yung turo niya, on Romans, turo niya, on, on John, on ganyan, lahat yan, you know, nakita ko rin paano siya nag-grow in Christ. You know, so it's not always na, ah, narinig ko na yan. Ah, na, ano ko na to. ba diba? It's more on the Holy Spirit speaks to you in your context. Tama diba, Brother Eric? Yeah, pinamahirap na sabi mong alam mo na yan. I have met so many people na sabi alam mo na pero pag tinanong mo the reality ng ano ba nangyari nung binisi mo si Christ, hindi nila maintindihan. Diba? It's, hindi naman itong padamihan ng alam. It's yung heart ni God. Ano ba gusto niya paalamin sa atin? Ano ba dapat natin gawin? Ano ba? Diba? Kaya medyo, pwede mo sabihin, medyo umuulit-ulit pa minsan-minsan tayo. Kasi hindi naman to Ah, ito, naturo ko na, hindi ka natuturo. O next week, dapat mas maganda yung turo ko o mas maganda yung revelation. Pag yun ang hinabol mo, yung magandang revelation, ang daming naging kulto dahil sa magandang revelation. Oh. Diba? It's more of naintindihan mo ba talaga? Diba? Ano ba gusto mangyari nga? Naintindihan mo ba? Bakit yun nga? Like, we always preach about Jesus Christ and new life. Naintindihan mo na ba talaga yun? Diba? Kahit I have taught so many times na yung Roman 6. Sabi may, I think once a week, binabasa ko pa rin. Just to renew, baka may, may, may dagdag o, di ba? Yung uh, uh, reality ng new man ko. Yun yung, I think yun yung pinamaintindihan, ay yung pinamaimportante, maintindihan mo, ano ba ginawa ni Christ sa iyo nung rinisig mo? Di ba? So yun. Hey, brother Ron, yun yun. Yeah. 
So, you know, again, Carola, it's not it's not about just finding new stuff, you know, but it's keeping it new in your heart, revisiting it. And, you know, again, as you grow in maturity, guys, yung, yung, nung binabasa ko yung Bible three, four, five years ago, ibang-iba sa natatanggap ko yung ngayon when I read the same passage. Bakit? Kasi yung foundation, yung understanding, yung heart, yung maturity that you have now is different from when you read it before. So, Anyway, guys, tonight, I'm going to teach on spirit, soul, and body. And I've thought on this before. Lagi akong, kami, Pastor Macho, Brother Eric, lagi akong may singit dyan na explanation eh. Kahit na five minutes, isisingit ko lagi yung spirit and soul and body. Ito mga, yung mga daliri ko. <laughs> lagi yeah. kong gamit na example. Kasi I want it to be, I'm not going to use graphics or whatever. I just want it to be so simple that you can explain it to anyone with your fingers. You know what I mean? I want I want that to be the norm. That I don't have... I don't need an elaborate presentation just to bring this point across. Simple lang ang gospel. So, so amen. Yeah, you know, I'm sure maraming insights, Brother Eric, Pastor Macho later, but uh, uh, let's get right to the scriptures. So tonight, tonight's message is going to be a teaching on spirit, soul, and body. And the title is Flesh Against Spirit. All right, Flesh Against Spirit. So, Guys, okay, let me let me explain. Our first passage for tonight, uh, and I will always start with this, is 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23. You know, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. And uh, ito, yung, <clears throat> ito yung pinaka-core. I mean, it, bakit importante itong passage ito? Sa passage na to, this is where the Apostle Paul differentiates between the three parts of the human life. Okay. So it says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. Okay? Kasi, okay, sa spirit natin, sanctified na tayo. Di ba? Sa soul and sa body natin, nandito pa tayo sa mundo. So the entirety of the human life or the human being is what? And may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, yung inaano ni Apostle Paul dito is sa spirit, alam niya naman, sanctified din tayo. Paul is uh, understood and preached very uh, powerfully on God's grace. So, just to show here, tatlong parte ang tao. And uh, I'm gonna, for those who know this already, I'm gonna go through it again. You know, very simply put, uh, what is a spirit, a soul, and a body? Di ba yung spirit, tsaka yung soul, pareho lang ba yun? See, that's the thing eh. Yung problema is nagagamit to interchangeably ng science or ng mga ibang denominations or church when you cannot use spirit and soul interchangeably. There is a very big difference between spirit and soul. Let me explain. Okay, so spirit and soul and body. Uh, body is obviously whatever you can see or touch or feel right now. Yan, mukha mo, flesh mo, katawan mo, literal na katawan mo. Yan, body mo. Anything, yan yan. It's the outer shell, your organs, everything. That's your body. Now, your soul, your soul inhabits your body. What is your soul? Your soul is your mind, your will, your ego, your emotions, your preferences, your character. Yung ugali mo. What makes you, you? That's your soul. Diba? Yung soul mo, yung ano dyan. So, ano yung spirit? Okay. Let me explain. So, Spirit, soul, and body. Three parts. Spirit, spirit, soul, and body. When God created man, he created us spirit, soul, and body. He created Adam to be spirit, soul, and body. And God is a spirit. The verse of book of John. God is a spirit. So he deals with us spirit to spirit. Okay? God deals with us spirit to spirit. God is a spirit. And ano, uh, importante na maintindihan natin yun. Kasi, guys, you know, we have to understand how God relates to us. So God is a spirit. That's why he came down diba, in, 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 um, in the flesh form of Jesus. Kasi nga, spirit siya. Pero si God mismo, God is a spirit. Wait, let me just pull up that, um, that reference. Hold on. Ayan, John 4, 24. Yan. Wala sa notes. But you know, just take note that in John, uh, John 4, verse 24, it says, God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth, diba? So alam natin yun. But when he deals with us, he deals with us spirit to spirit. So spirit, soul, and body. God connects with Adam and with us originally, dapat spirit. So ano nangyari? 
when Adam sinned, di ba, death entered the world. Ano nangyari? Yung death is hindi naman namatay yung katawan mo. Yung death, ano nangyari? Spiritual death. So because Adam chose to sin, Adam chose independence from God, Adam ceded and turned over his authority in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, dominion, authority over all creation was given to Adam. When he sinned, yung authority na yun napunta kay Satan. And what happened? Adam became spiritually disconnected from God. He became spiritually dead. That's why in scriptures, you will see in other parts of scripture na before you were spiritually dead. Ba? So originally, spirit, soul, and body. Nung nagsin si Adam, spirit was spiritually dead. Ang natira is soul and body. Ang problema dyan is meron isa pang variable. May isa pang dumagdag. Nung namatay si spirit, may nabuhay. Ano yung, naman, ano yung nabuhay? Namatay yung naging spiritually dead tayo. Ang nabuhay is what you call the sin nature. Okay? The sin nature. Naturo na to ni Brother Eric. I've also taught on this uh, before. Hindi ko na maalala yung title ng message. But the sin nature is what makes people sinners. Okay? The sin nature is the fallen nature of man. It thrives in the soul and the body, collectively known as the flesh. Okay? So spirit, soul, and body. Ito yung flesh. Yung spirit, spiritually dead. Ito, flesh, nag-inhabit dyan, si sin nature. So guys, brothers and sisters, what makes one a sinner? A sinner is someone with a sin nature. A sinner is not the, the one who sins. Hindi ka sinner, you don't have a sinner's identity because you commit sin. You commit sin because you have a sin nature. Okay? So, so again, spirit, soul, and body, you were spiritually disconnected from God when Adam sinned, and then uh, the sin nature was alive in the flesh, the soul, and the body. That's why in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, hindi makarelate si God spirit to spirit. The only people who who had um, access to the Spirit of God were the prophet, the priest, and the king. And the Spirit of God could not dwell in them permanently. The Spirit of God would come upon these people, inspire them to speak, inspire them to prophesy, inspire them to lead the God's chosen people. And, and, and parang si, ano, si David, may mga prayer si David na, let not your spirit depart from me. Diba? Lord, don't let your spirit depart from me. Hindi na applicable sa atin ngayon yun. Pero kasi sa Old Testament, bakit hindi pwede magstay si Holy Spirit sa kanila? The Holy Spirit is a holy spirit. Okay? God's Holy Spirit is holy. Meaning, holiness and evil cannot coexist. So, hindi pwedeng may sin nature ka, pero magdadwell dun si Holy Spirit. Hindi pwede. A holy God cannot live in an unholy temple. All right? So spirit, soul, and body, sin made you spiritually dead. The, the, the flesh, the soul, and the body have the sin nature. Okay. So what happens? How does God fix this? Diba? How does God fix this? Kasi kung may sin nature ka, wala kang kalaban-laban, you are condemned. Wala kang laban. Talo ka dito sa mundo, fallen world, kawawa ka, Satan, hindi ka maka-communicate freely with God. Kaya yung mga tao sa Old Testament, umaasa sa prophet, priest, and king. Yung dati, nasa flesh pa rin sila, yung mga prophet, yung mga uh, everyone in the Old Testament, although the Holy Spirit would come and give them uh, inspiration to say, to prophesy, to do this, to do mighty works, umaalis din si Holy Spirit. Hindi siya nag-dwell in them forevermore. Bakit? Kasi hindi pa rin sila redeemed from the sin nature. So when did that happen? You know, let's go to the next slide. This is the this is the verse. Na ito yung usually pag bago kang Christian o bago kang born again ka, katanggap mo lang kay Jesus ka, a sinner's prayer mo lang. Ito yung first verse naman na inaano sa iyo, pero na memorize. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So You know, I remember when I first read this verse, feel na feel ko. Kasi nung, nung naging Christian talaga ako, hindi yung nag-a-attend ako ng church. Eh. Matagal ako nag-a-attend ng church. 2005 pa lang nag-a-attend ako ng Christian church. Eh. Pero naging Christian ako, 
2012 pa. You know, it wasn't until seven years after that I, I actually became a Christian. You know, na, I was going to church, I was attending, I was doing this and doing that, but hindi para na all Christian nun. But when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior genuinely, feel na feel ko tong verse na to. Di ba? Kasi sumabog buhay ko eh. So parang Lord, ito na yung pagkakataon ko. New life bago na. Uh, the new creation is here. Wala na yung dati. Madaling sabihin yan. Kapag pangit yung ano mo. But what if you grew up a Christian? Di ba? Wala kang transformative moment. Wala kang, you know, point of, ano, wala. Lumaki akong Christian. Lumaki akong Sunday school. We kind of just grew up. Ganito. So ano yun? Di ba? Ano yung old creation, new creation? Uh... He, walang walang special cases eh walang favoritism si God there is there is no partiality with God Romans 2 left so there has to be an explanation that fits all you know that that caters to all so this verse is for every Christian what does it mean that the old is gone and the new has come again spirit soul body sin disconnected you from God you are spiritually dead your flesh and the sin nature it was there. So, sinner ka dahil dito. Now, Jesus Christ died for our sins. Diba? And that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So, we were redeemed. He used the propitiation for our sins. First John 2, 2. Not only our sins, but the sins of the world. So, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you are in Christ, you become a new creation. Ano yung ibig sabihin nun? The old things have passed away. Yun yung sin nature. Yun yung kinuha ni Jesus at nakapako sa krus. Yun yung he took your sin. Hindi lang yung act of sin mo. Hindi lang yung mali nung ginawa mo nung grade 3 ka. Hindi lang yung lie na sinabi mo 8 months ago. Hindi yung, di ba? O, hindi yun yun eh. Hindi lang yung act of sin. But yung sin nature. The very thing na sinira ni Adam noon, ni-redeem ni Jesus Christ. So the old things have passed away, meaning the sin nature from that dwells in your flesh has been taken and nailed to the cross. It's dead. It is passed away. It is gone. Behold, all things have become new. So your spirit now is born again. Your spirit is a new creation in Christ. And you are now spiritually connected once again to the Lord. Diba? So you term na born again. Guys, pag tinanggap mo si Jesus, siya mo, born again na ako. If you, kung matangkad ka, bago ka ma-born again, matang, same ka pa rin after ka ma-born again. Okay? Kung, kung matakaw ka <laughs> before you were born again, after mo tanggapin si Jesus, matakaw ka pa rin naman. You know what I mean? It, personality mo yun eh. Kung pogi ka after, before no, pogi ka pa rin after. So, wala naman nagbago sa physical natin kapag tinanggap mo si Jesus eh. Hindi mo nakikita yun. So ano yung born again? Di ba ito yung hindi maintindihan ni Nicodemus? Sabi niya, how does one become born again? Di ba ano yung papasok ulit sa tiyan ng nanay, papanganak ulit? Hindi niya maintindihan. Bakit? Kasi nasa flesh siya. Being born again is not a social club. It's not a denomination. It's not a church. Being born again is a spiritual state. It is a spiritual identity that your spirit that was that was spiritually dead before has now become born again in Christ. The sin nature is gone and the spirit is your new and true identity. So your true identity mo is in Christ, in the spirit. And that, grab yung identity na yan. Bakit? Kasi tingin mo yung next verse. Next verse natin. In 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17, it says, it says, but the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. Guys, this is mind-blowing. Kasi, okay, let me, masyado tayong pamilyar sa verse na to. Oh, one spirit, one spirit, one spirit. Now, let, let, me, let me just dig a little deeper. First and foremost, pinag-uusapan dito si Lord. Pinag-uusapan dito si God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, created all things through the word of his power, spoke life and breathed life his breath into the lungs of man. And life came about. Yan si God na nagsalipa sa bundok, you know. He is the God who can raise the dead. He is the God who can cancel all that. And he has authority over all things. Who knows all things. Diba? Who is omnipresent. And that's God. It's all powerful. The greatest being in the universe. That's God. 
And guess what, mga kapatid? Pag born again ka, you have joined yourself to Him and you become one spirit with Him. Spirit, soul, and body. One third of your being is absolutely one with the Holy Spirit of the living God. Can you imagine that? Kahit na feeling mo, madami kang palpak, madami kang mali, feeling mo masyado kang mataba, feeling mo masyado kang ganyan. Regardless of whatever is going on in your flesh, your spirit right now is 100% joined in 100% Holy Ghost. 100% Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Hindi siya power ni God, hindi siya uh, provision ni God. No, no, no. He is God. One third of you is absolutely 100% conjoined in one with God. And this is a relationship that sobrang unprecedented tong relationship ito. It is an unprecedented depth of intimacy. Alam mo bakit? Okay. The deepest relationship you can have in this lifetime is your spouse. Your husband or your wife? Your spouse. Bakit? Because when you get married, when you come together, you become one flesh. Okay? You become one flesh. You open your union intimacy. You know what affects me, affects you. You sin against your wife, is sinning against your own body. You one flesh then. That's the deepest relationship, the most intimate your relationship you will have in this lifetime. You know? And 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 that's pretty deep. Your husband, your wife, you love, you 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 sexual relations, and that's something that is so special. Pero one flesh pa lang yun. Imagine mo tong depth ng relationship with God that you are one spirit. It is unprecedented. It is a depth of intimacy that not even husband and wife can can know. It's reserved for you and God. So this is something that our flesh will contradict. Diba? Kasi sanay tayo eh. For the past so long, lumaki tayo, nabuhay tayo, na flesh yung nagdadrive sa atin eh. Diba? Spiritually dead. Tapos flesh, na sin nature, yan yung ano. Tapos naging born again ka, tanggal si sin nature, si, fle- si spirit yung alive. So what do you have to do? You have to live out of your spirit and not out of your flesh. Why? Si flesh, si soul and si body, Okay, wala na yung sin nature. But the sinful habits, the sinful lusts, the sinful desires, nandun. Nandun. Kaya, you know, yung, yung tendency mo, kalit, yung tendency ng tao mag-lust, yung tendency ng tao mainis, yung tendency... We, the, the soul and the body have yet to be uh, have yet to be perfected. Yun yung prayer ni Paul nung first uh, Thessalonians 5.23, yung unong verse natin, yung prayer niya na ma-sanctify holy buo not not na ano buong ano yung spirit sanctified na eh yung soul and body di ba hindi pa eh we corruptible pa to eh kaya pag may nangyari yung masama nalulungkot tayo di ba kapag may hindi maganda eh nagagalit tayo pag nabangga ka nagkakapasa you know so yung body natin and yung soul yung flesh yun hindi pa perfected but your spirit is absolutely perfect. We, we we talked about this last Saturday. You know that your spirit, you are perfect, you're holy, you're blameless, you are prospered, you are perfected, you are uh, sanctified, you are redeemed. Kumpleto ka. Your spirit is absolutely perfect and holy. Kasi one spirit ka with the Lord. And that is your true identity. Ang problema is yung Christian hindi naiintindihan to. So, nabubuhay pa rin sila according to the flesh. Because they lack knowledge, because Christians don't understand this, they start operating out of the flesh. So, feeling nila, sinner pa rin sila. Bakit? Kasi yung flesh mo, sanay mag-sin. They are not living out of their true identity in Christ, which is found in your spirit. So, spirit, soul, and body, it is the spirit that has to dominate you. It, you have to submit your flesh dito sa spirit. Bakit? Kasi ito yung truth. Ito yung true identity mo. This is who you are. You are one spirit with the Lord. The flesh is not your identity. Your flesh is just here. But pagbalik ni Jesus or kung umakit tayo heaven alin sa mauna if we pass away and go up to heaven or if we if we if we if Jesus comes back already in rapture now or whatever kung ano yung mauna dun lang maano yung flesh pero right now there is a battle between the flesh and the spirit. 
That's why yung title ng message natin is Flesh Against Spirit. Let's go to the next slide. Next slide, it says, di ba? Uh, Galatians 5.17, For the flesh sets its desire against the spirit. So again, guys, naintindihan ni Paul yung grace. He is, yung understanding natin of grace, si Paul yung ginamit ni Holy Spirit to write it down. Yung, 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 fle- yung flesh natin, our soul and our body, where the sin nature used to dwell, when it was nailed to the cross, wala na yung sin nature. Ang problema, yung flesh, may programming siya, yung desires niya. Sanay siya, the old habits of the old self. Yes, the old is gone, the new has come. Di ba? But if you don't renew your mind and you don't operate out of your spirit, yung flesh mo nandun pa rin. So look at this verse. The flesh sets its desire against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. In yung problem. Yes, you're born again. Yes, you're holy and redeemed and, and sanctified and perfected in your spirit. Ang tanong, are you living out of the flesh or are you living out of the spirit? Are your desires coming from the flesh or are your desires coming from the spirit? So this is not something God will do for you that he's going he's gonna to change your desires. Na, okay, alisin ko na yung ganito mo. That's not, hindi si God yun. Eh, kasi free will natin yun. God gave us a new heart. God gave us a new spirit. God made us one with his spirit. God made us holy, perfect, and blameless. But you have to choose to operate out of the spirit and not the flesh. Nagbabanggaan lagi ito. Diba? This is why so many Christians can't understand I've encountered Christians that that um, hindi na sila umalis sa sinner's mindset. Hindi, sinner pa rin ako. I'm like, pare, kung talagang sinner ka, hindi ka hakit ng heaven. Oh, how can you say that? But I'm saved. Oh nga. Saved ka. Pero para maging saved ka, yung sinner, kailangan mamatay sa cross. Kaya nga kinuha ni Jesus, di ba? He became sin. He took all the sins of the world and it was nailed to the cross that you can have a new life and that you are born again in him so you are no longer a sinner you were a sinner you were saved by grace now you are a saint you are holy blameless and set apart why it's not because you're good it's not because mabait ka it's not because malakas self control mo it's because you received god's grace through faith diba ephesians 2:8 and 9 so even though you are born again, and yes, you are born again, yes, you're going to heaven, yes, the Holy Spirit of God dwells in you. Yung flesh mo, wala na yung sin nature, so you're not a sinner, but the old desires of the flesh, it's still there. And it desires the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. So, guys, right now, what we're living in, the, the, the way we're living in is we have a new identity in Christ. Holy, perfect, blameless, my power in the Holy Spirit, and everything. Ang tanong, who is dominating you? Who is dominating us? The spirit, our true identity, or the flesh with the old desires of the old man, old sinner? Diba? So, guys, ang point nito is, kailangan may awareness tayo. Nasa spirit ba tayo? O nasa flesh? Hindi tayo conscious na tama ba ako, mali. Hindi yun yung point. Di ba? But we do have to discern whether we are operating out of the soul and the body or are we living out of the spiritual identity, the true identity. So there is a battle against one another. There are opposition against one another kung sino magdodominate sa'yo. So, you know, you're in your spirit, you're not trying to ask stuff from God. You already have everything from God. God himself is one spirit with you. Inside you is God himself and his spirit. Can you imagine that? Nandun yung power, nandun yung life, the creator of the universe, the one who raises uh, people from the dead, who breathes life, who speaks things into existence, even though they were not, he will speak them, and they are. Yun si God. Guess what? He's in you. Kaya dapat, pag nagpa-pray ka, nagbe-minister ka, nag-speak forth ka in faith, yung power ni God, nag-flow. That's you. Because your spirit, that's your true identity. If you're not seeing that, if you're not manifesting the power of God, you're not witnessing the power of God, you're not living a lifestyle that is just supernatural and amazing, then you're living out of the flesh. 
meron ka nito. Problema is, hindi mo napapakinabang, hindi mo nagagamit. You know, madalas na gamit ko dyan ng example, yung ATM. Diba? ATM. So imagine if you have an ATM card and 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 somebody deposited 100 million pesos in your ATM account and then guess what? Hindi mo alam. Hindi <laughs> mo alam. So, nasa yung ATM card mo, may 100 million ka to your name legally. You have it. It's yours. It's in your account. It's there. The bank recognizes it. Lahat recognizes it. Pero hindi mo alam. So, millionaire ka pa rin. That's your identity. But, hindi mo siya mapapakinabangan. Bakit? Kasi hindi mo alam. And that goes the same for most Christians today. They have no idea who they are in Christ. They have no idea what they have in the Spirit. They have no idea what it means to, to have to be one Spirit with the Lord. And they have no idea about the difference of the Spirit, the soul, and the body. Tingin nila, isa nito, so jumble jumble. But when you understand this, the Spirit, soul, and body, the flesh against the Spirit, you will realize that when you fall to sin, when you commit acts of sin, when you do this and do that, nasa flesh ka. But that is not the real you. So God's grace allows us to just go back to the Spirit and keep on going back to the Spirit right now. You know, as we slip, we fall, we make mistakes. Nagayan, thank you, Lord, for your grace. Balik ako sa Spirit. That is a sign that you are in the flesh. And hindi maganda yung fruit ng flesh. Diba? Yung manifestation ng flesh. So, again, guys, in your spirit, you already have everything you need. The spirit of the living God is one with your spirit. The problem is the flesh gets in the way and hinders you from manifesting the power of the living God. Diba? So, tingin mo, Galatians 2.20. Ito, isa pa tong, ano, isa pa tong popular verse. Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Kaya na nangyari to. Hindi naman nangyari kay Paul to. You know, he wasn't crucified with Christ. Not physically. It's no longer I who live. But Christ lives in it. Ano ibig sabihin na to? So in the flesh, this does not make sense at all. You know, this is not mere poetry. This is spiritual truth. That we have been crucified with Christ. Ano yung na-crucify with Christ? It is the old, the sin nature. The, 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 uh, the sin nature. Yung, yun yung crucified with Christ. Diba? So the old sinner, kinuha ni God yung sin. Ah, kinuha ni Christ yung sin. Yun yung pinako sa cross. Diba? And then, it's no longer I who live. So my old identity, the old sinner, is dead. Diba? It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Ito yun, yung spirit. Kasi patayin na to, ito, tanggal na yung sin nature, ito na buhay, born again, Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So yung buhay mo sa flesh, dapat yung tinu- ang, ang, ang katotohanan yan is patay na yung dating ikaw. Tinutuloy mo yung life ni Christ. Di ba? Yung life na ginive up niya, yun yung tinutuloy So yun yung life na tinutuloy. Okay. Hold on. So, so guys, you know, our life, it's not our own anymore. The old um, the old sin nature, it's God. Ulit, ulit ako dito. It's like the, the 15th time I've mentioned it. Pero I just can't stop reiterating the importance of that. Kasi guys, alam ko nakakarin din ako minsan. But this is something we have to... This is something... This is something that we have to, um, um, what do you call that? Renew our minds on and remind ourselves on. Bakit? Kasi yung flesh nandiyan. Yung flesh pumakapalag eh. Yung flesh na, na, ano, yung flesh natin kumukontra sa spiritual reality. Na born again ka na. Yung flesh kumukontra sa spiritual reality. That the sinner is dead. Your flesh will remind you how sinful you are. But you know, you have to, you have to, Uh, have your spirit, Dominic, and say, no, the sinner is dead. Those desires are gone. Hindi na ako slave to sin because I am redeemed and I am one with Jesus Christ. Christ lives in you. Where? In your spirit. Let's go to Colossians 1.27. Colossians 1 verse 27. And I, I quote this verse uh, quite often. It says, to them, God will to make known 
what are the riches of his glory for this mystery among the Gentiles. God's will is to reveal his mystery, is to re reveal the riches of his glory, which is what? I mean, the riches of his glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So how are you, how is Christ in you? Diba? Paano ko lalaki ka? Hindi mo pwede mabuntis. Anong ganito? Hindi mo pwedeng iliteral eh. Kailangan maintindihan natin yung spirit, uh, spirit, soul, and body. Where does Christ reside? Obviously not in the soul, not in the body. Christ resides in your spirit and you are one spirit with him. Your identity is that Christ is in you. When God looks at you today, he's not looking at you according to your flesh. The Second Corinthians 5.16 here. He looks at you. He sees Jesus. He sees Christ in you. Kaya ka naging holy dahil kay Christ in you. Kaya ka naging sanctified, redeemed, whole, prospered, empowered, lahat yan dahil Christ in you. This is your true identity. So how conscious are we that we are living out of our true identity and not just out of our flesh? Diba? So in nangyayari kasi guys is so many people are striving to become holy. So many people are striving to become dapat ganito, dapat ganyan, dapat sanctified, uh, progressive sanctification. You are already sanctified. Your spirit is holy. You need true identity. It's not a matter of becoming holier or becoming more sanctified. No, no, no. It's a matter of just simply subjecting your flesh to the spirit. Now, your flesh, mo, your soul, and your body, mo, sumunod sa spirit. Meaning, you live by the truth of God's word. You live by the truth of what he says about you and who you are because Christ is in you. And your flesh, mo, pag si spirit yung nagdo-dominate, your flesh, hindi na siya magde-desire to do all those things. Kasi dominant is si spirit. Hindi na uubra yung mga desire niya. Mawawala kasi you're walking and you're living out your true identity, which is Christ in you. You know, if you look at this the same way, like for example, if you're if you're struggling with depression or anxiety or insomnia or sickness or ganyan, hindi po hindi kasi Christ in you. Eh. So spiritually, you have Christ in you. What do you have to do? You have to manifest what's in the spirit here in the flesh. You, you're not praying for healing. You're already healed. You're already whole. You're already prospered. You just have to manifest it. Take it from the spirit and manifest it to your flesh. How? Put this in subjection to this. Put the flesh in subjection to the spirit. So that's what I want to focus on about now. Yung identity natin in Christ is something we have to constantly remind ourselves of and be aware of. Christ is already in you. Perfect, holy, lahat, kompleto ka na. Ang tanong, gano kang ka-aware? Diba yung example ko, may 100 million ka sa ATM mo. Kung di mo alam, di mo mapapakinabangan. Diba? But if you know it, you will make use of those resources. It will get you by. It will prosper you. It'll, you'll be able to do a lot of things. Diba? In this world, and I'm not trying to sound selfish. I'm, my point lang is, may reason kung bakit binigay ni God. Kaya niya binigay yun para pakinabangan natin. And it's not humble to say, no, hindi ko kailangan. False humility yun. Actually, pride yun. Sinasabi mo, ay God, di kita kailangan. Binayad mo, walang kwenta. True humility is to accept what God says about you and to live out your true identity and say, Lord, thank you. Binigay mo sa akin to. Even though I don't deserve it, you gave it by grace. I receive it by faith and I want to manifest you. I want to manifest Christ in me. I want my flesh to reflect Christ in me in my spirit. Diba? Guys, 1 John 4, let's go there. 1 John 4, 17, uh, the second half of that verse, it says, because as he is, as Jesus is, so also are we in this world. Guys, this is a powerful verse. Diba? As he is, so are we in this world. Hindi pwedeng ako, akit ng heaven. No, 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 no. Right now, in this world, as he is, so are we. How is that possible? You look in the mirror, you don't feel holy, you don't feel this, you don't feel that. Hindi kasi feelings eh. It's a spiritual reality. So ang tanong dun is, ano yung nagdo-dominate sa thought life mo? Ano nagdo-dominate sa decision making mo? Is it your flesh? Or is it your spirit? Kasi if it is your spirit, and you manifest that in the flesh, 
as Jesus is, so also are we in this world. When Jesus, the power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons, everything there, nasa atin din yun, the same Holy Spirit. You know, the, 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 the life-giving power, everything, binigay ni God sa spirit natin. So it's not our power, it's God's power, but the way we manifest it is we let the Holy Spirit dominate our lives. So, ang tanong ko, di ba, ang, 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 ang tanong ko dyan is, ano yung nag-dominate sa atin? This is true in our spirit, but our flesh doesn't automatically, you know, manifest it. The flesh will automatically lean towards evil and sin. Kasi yun yung nakasanayan ng yung old desires ng flesh. Pero itong verse na to, sinasabi, same na tayo with Jesus eh. As He is, so are we, because His Spirit lives in us. So, perfected na tayo in the Spirit, complete na tayo in the Spirit. We just need to be conscious of this truth and have the Spirit dominate our soul and our body. So, if we can't discern kung nasa soul tayo or nasa Spirit, medyo malaking problema yun. Diba? If you can't tell between operating in the soul and operating in the Spirit, medyo malaking problema yun. So, how do you discern kung nasa soul ba ako, nasa flesh ba ako, or nasa Spirit? You know, let's go to the next slide. Hebrews 4, verse 12. One of my favorite verses. Hebrews 4, 12. It says, For the word of God is living and powerful. It's alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. And of what? Joints and marrow. That's your body. So the word of God will dissect and it will pierce through, it will divide, hihimayin niya, papakita niya, nasa soul ka ba, nasa spirit ka ba, o nasa body, ano bang namumuno sa'yo? And it will discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. Ano yung heart? The heart is the core of your being. The heart is where the soul and the spirit meet. Yung, yung tatlong part na to, yung, yung spirit, soul, and body, that is where the heart that, that yung heart, yung intersection ng tatlong mundo. Yung spirit, yung soul, yung body, yung heart, yung pinakagitna niya lahat. So, what will happen? The Word of God can differentiate and discern and dissect between nasa flesh ka ba o nasa spirit ka. Are you thinking out of your soul? The soul kasi is fallen. The spirit is born again and renewed. So, ano yung desires mo? Ano yung decisions mo? Ano yung mga gusto mo? Ano yung iniisip mo? Ano yung thought life mo? If you focus on the Word of God and let the Word of God come alive in your heart, it will dissect, it will show you. Oh, Ron, nasa flesh ka. Nangagalit ka eh. Ba't ka nangagalit dyan sa ganyan? Soul mo yan. Balik ka sa spirit. Okay, thank you, Lord. Thank you for reminding me. Balik ako sa spirit. I, I have no reason to be sad or anxious. I have no reason to worry because I'm blessed. Tapos, di ba? O may problema, may ginawang ganito, may sinabing hindi maganda. Kung naapektuhan ka, oh, ba't ka inaapektuhan? Nasa soul ka na naman. Bakit? Let God be true and every man a liar. Your identity and your value is not dependent on the words of other people. It is dependent on the word of God. Okay, tanggal offense, tanggal ano. Thank you, Lord. I am born again. I am blessed. Guys, but if you don't know the word of God, you can't tell between flesh and spirit. You can't tell. The flesh will win against the spirit if you have no idea what the spirit is. Diba? You know? So, yung mahirap dun is yung buhay mo, hindi mo mabag. Hindi mo rin mamamanifest si Christ. So, ang tanong is what is filling your mind? What is dominating you, your thoughts, your your decision making, your plans, your everything? Nasa flesh ba? O sa spirit? Bakit importante ito? Let's look at the next slide. Sobrang importante nito. Bakit? Romans 8, 6 says, for the mindset on the flesh is death. Guys, ito yung problema. What's so bad? Ano ngayon kung soul? Eh, kung feel na feel mo yung soul, eh, emotions kit. Oo nga. Pero yung ending niya, death. Man, I don't want this. I've had enough death and destruction in my life. You know? Tapos na ako dyan. That was the old me. That's God. Pero yun nga lang, kahit na born again ka, kung hindi ka aalis sa flesh mo, you will... You are planting seeds of death. You will reap death. I'm not cursing you. That's just what this, ano is. this verse says. If your mind is set on the flesh, if, if you cannot discern between soul and spirit through the word of God, and you are operating out of your soul 
and you are not living out your true identity in Christ, you're going to reap death. But the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. Guys, sobrang obvious naman kung ano mag- mas okay dito, di ba? Ang problema kasi nga is hindi natin alam yung word. O yung mga iba, walang pakialam sa word. Basta kung ano nung feel ko. Feel ko to eh. Feel ko yan eh. Puro feeling. Feeling ka ng feeling. Flesh yun. I'm not saying emotions are bad. God gave us emotions for a reason. But you should not be ruled by your emotions. You should not be ruled by your feelings. Kung ganyan ka, guess what? You're gonna reap death. Yun yung fruit ng flesh. Death. But the mindset on the spirit, if you are conscious to live out your true identity, you're conscious that there is Christ in you, you're conscious that the word of God is the highest and absolute authority sa buhay mo, you will reap life and peace. Verse 7, because the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards God. Hindi, yung flesh mo, kontra kay God yan. It does not subject, it subject itself to the law of God. Kumo kontra si flesh yung desires. It's a spirit. It is not even able to do so. So yung flesh against spirit, sobrang importante to discern nasa soul ba ako, nasa spirit. Body ba yung nagdidig ka sa akin? O spirit. Bakit tayo nagpa-fast? Para i-put in place yung flesh. Na hindi ako magpapatalo sa'yo. Ikaw ba kinig sa akin? Di ba? Ito pinakamasaklap. Verse 8. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Guys, this is why it's so important to discern spirit, soul, and body. Kung isang halo-halong kalamay lang lahat yan, hindi mo na may intindihan ano nangyari sa cross. Okay, sabi nila, bayad daw yung sins ko, iba eh, nag-usin pa rin ako. Eh, sabi nila, new creation, iba't eh, ganun pa rin buhay. Eh, sabi nila, may healing. Wala naman, may sakit pa rin ako. Because they don't differentiate between spirit and soul and body. If whatever is written on the word, in the word of God is absolute truth, okay? Amen. Let's agree there. It's absolute truth. Pag may nakasulot dun, kunyari, by his stripes, I'm healed. That's absolute truth. Whether mag-manifest yung healing sa'yo o hindi, truth yun. Your experience does not determine the validity of God's word. Okay? Pero kung hindi nag-manifest yung word ni God sa'yo, it's not God's fault. It's because nasa flesh tayo, eh, hindi sa spirit. God deals with us spirit to spirit. His words are spiritual. So when we rece- receive his spiritual words, di ba ano yung sabi ni, ano? sa John 6 verse 63, wala dito, pero... Sabi ni Jesus, my words, they are spirit and they are life. So you can only receive God's word in your spirit. They will only manifest if you receive them spirit to spirit. Pag ginamit mo flesh para intindihin yung spiritual words ni God, hindi pwede. Kasi ito, Romans 8, 7, the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards God. It does not subject, it subject itself to the law of God. Guys, kaya maraming nagiging kulto, maraming naiging harmful na teaching and doktrina. Bakit? Maraming kung ano-ano mga theology dyan na sobrang harmful, hyper-sovereignty, yung mga God allows yan, God breaks you, broken bones, puro ganun. Bakit? Kasi ginagamit nila yung flesh para maintindihan yung spirit. Hindi mo pwede gawin yun. Mindset on the flesh is death. And that's exactly what they're reaping right now. Puro death. But if you open your heart and your mind and you use the word of God to discern kung nasa spirit ka ba o nasa soul, makita mo, Lord, ano ba, saan ba ako nag-ooperate? Sa flesh ba ako o sa spirit? Kung magamit mo yun, makita mo yung value ng paggamit ng word of God to catch yourself if you're operating out of the spirit or out of the flesh, you will learn to go to the spirit, be dominated by the spirit, live out your true identity in Christ. And guess what? You will harvest life, and peace. Ito yung spirit, soul, and body. Sobrang importante, mga kapatid. Sobrang importante. The word of God is the key to reaping life, to receiving life and peace, and accessing all the amazing things that the Lord has given to us in our spirit. Without the word of God, we won't be able to live out our true identity. Okay? So we are born again in the spirit. We will not be able to experience eternal life without that, you know, without yung sa spirit. Yeah, yun yung problema. So Galatians 6, 8. Galatians 6, 8, next time. For the one who sows to his own flesh. Yan na nga. What are you sowing to the flesh? If you make your decisions out of the flesh, if you follow the lust of the flesh, if you let your soul 
your emotions rule you lahat ng desisyon mo kasi feeling ko to kasi inis ako kay ganyan kasi si ganito feel ko lang pag ganyan ka magdesisyon guess what you from the flesh will reap corruption but the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life and we all know that the seed is the word of god and if you use the word of god and and, and you let the holy spirit illuminate that in your life dun yung eternal life mo ang problema nga is kuna sa flesh ka born again ka nga pero yung eternal life hindi mo may experience dito sa earth bakit pa sa flesh ka eh? corruption yung maririto eh but if you are indeed truly born again Tandaan mo guys, John 3.16, when does eternal life start? It doesn't start when you die and go to heaven. Eternal life starts when you believe in Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but has eternal life. Whosoever believes in Jesus shall not perish, shall not perish, but has eternal life. Eternal life starts now. You don't have to die and go to heaven to wait for eternal life. You can experience eternal life now. Why? Because the Spirit of God is already in you pag tanggap mo kay Jesus. Ang problema, hindi mo nare-reap, hindi mo naha-harvest yung eternal life, hindi mo napapakinabangan yung eternal life na yun. Bakit? Kasi sa flesh tayo nagsusaw. Kaya sobrang importante maging aware saan tayo nag-operate, sa spirit, sa soul, or sa body. Guys, I, I offer it to you this. I offer to you tonight this explanation, this this this, this shedding some light on what goes on in the spirit, what goes on in our being, diba? But I can't make the decision for you. Na oh, mula ngayon, spirit ka na. Hindi, hindi ganun eh. I I can't. I'm not trying to convince you. Hindi ko pwedeng decision to para sa Hindi kita pwedeng ilay hands. Tas it transfer yung whatever ko sa Hindi yun yung point. Eh. You have to choose. For yourself, with your own free will, to sow to the Spirit. You have the desire and want it for yourself to live according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. You have to choose and decide for yourself na gagamitin ko yung Word of God para mahuli ko yung sarili ko kung flesh yung umiiral sa akin or Spirit yung nagdodom. Kasi ayoko mag ng death. That's your decision. I'm not trying to argue, I'm not trying to convince you na ito yung tama, dito ko na Christianity is not an argument. You have to choose. Kaya mo gustuhin na, alam mo, ayoko na yung old life ko. Talagang born again ako. I'm gonna start living as a born again creation. Why? Because my spirit is one with the Lord's spirit. I want to start experiencing His power. I want to experience His grace. I want to experience His love. I want to experience eternal life starting now and forevermore. And that's something that we can only do if your mind is set on the spirit. So, You know, sobrang clear naman ang resulta. So to the flesh, corruption. So to the spirit, life and peace. So parang itong word of God, yung salita ng Diyos, para siyang spiritual ATM na yun yung panggamit mo para ma-withdraw. Kung ano yung nasa spirit mo ma-manifest sa flesh, you need the word of God. Di ba? It's it, the word of God received by your spirit is the faith that receives the grace and that that is what manifests the spiritual reality into the physical reality. So it's your choice. Okay? God already made his choice. You don't have to pray, God, Lord, send me your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Hindi ganun yan. Hindi ganun yan. Unless first time siguro ang tatanggap ko ay Jesus, baka pwede mo pang invite si Holy Spirit. But you don't have to ask him all that stuff. Why? God already made his choice. He made his spirit dwell in you the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead who gives life to our mortal bodies, it's in you, it's in me, it's in all who believe. Inside us is the power of the living God, is God himself in the form of his spirit is one with our spirit. God already said yes. Diba? Binigay na ni God everything that you need in this lifetime. Your identity, your everything is already in your spirit. This is my last slide, Ephesians 1.3. And alagi ko naman gamit ng slide na to, you know, all of us here. Reminder: This is what you have in your spirit. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has what blessed us (past tense) with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Where in Christ? Where is Christ in your spirit? In your spirit contains every spiritual blessing ng laman ng langit. 
in heaven, every spiritual blessing is there. The thing is, how are we going to manifest that in our flesh? So you're not trying to ask God, do this, do this, give me this, give me that. Actually, binigay niya na ngayon. You already have eternal life. You have life and peace. You have the power of God. You have uh, gifts. You have all these amazing things. You have life. You have God's love. You have the power of God's grace. There, you have everything in there. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in your spirit. Because the spirit of Christ in your spirit, it is an ayan. So, ang tanong jan, kailangan mo magchoose. Sino masusulod? Si flesh o si spirit? Saan ka magsusol? Sa flesh o si spirit? Magkakontra lagi yan. And you're, you're not gonna reach a point na, kasi mo, parang 65 years old na ako, tagal na akong Christian, hindi ko na kailangan, wala na si flesh. No! Habang humihinga ka, and dyan si flesh, and the flesh will always be contrary to the spirit. So why? So what is it? You need to renew your mind in God's word. You have to constantly renew your mind in God's word and remind your flesh that, you know what, flesh, you're not in charge. The sin nature is dead. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, and that is my true identity. Diba? You slip, you fall, you make mistakes, balik tayo, identity natin, Christ. Hindi na ako yan. I'm gonna live out of my spirit. Makulit yung flesh mo, pinepeste ka, madaming mga evil thoughts, madaming yun, mag-fasting ka. Ah, hindi ka ubra sa akin, flesh. I put you under control. Si spirit ang magdodominate sa We don't fast to get things from God. We fast to, to weaken our flesh and our spirit would be strengthened. Our sensitivity to the spirit would be strengthened. Amen? So, you know, guys, sobrang importante. Kailangan talaga, like, I, I don't mind revisiting this, this teaching or this revelation. Sobrang importante maging totoo sa puso na. Diba? So, I just pray na maging, you know, makita nyo, if, you, if it's your first time listening to this, You know, I, I pray that this this re, you will receive this in your heart and in your spirit. If it's not your first time listening to this, I pray you know that that you are refreshed by this, reminded who you are in Christ. So, you know, you know brother Eric, Pastor Macho. Uh, I think that's you know, it's more of to understand spirit, soul, and body. Kailangan mong maintindihan ano maggusto mong yari ni God. Well, like sabi mo nga, nagdecide na si God. So, hindi tayo, we're not here to change yung mind ni God o palitan ng gusto niya mangyari. It's more of, let's cooperate. And number one nga, it's pag naintindihan mo yung goodness ni God, madaling mag-cooperate eh. Bakit kailangan yung spirit, soul, and body gawin sa atin? Diba? Ang grabe ng binayad niya just to create, to, to buhay ulit yung spirit niya. Bakit? That's where your connection kay God. That's where pwede tayong mag-relationship kay God. That's where pagtingin ni God sa atin, di ba? Yung si Jesus Christ. Yun yun eh. Yung kasi yun yung spirit, di ba? Spirit ni Christ. Yun yung sa atin. So yun yung brand new. Yun yung walang kasalanan. Yun yung walang sin. Yun yung walang ano. So if you still ando pa rin sa utak na sinners ako, say by grace, Then, mo naintindihan, God gave us a new body, a new ano ba, body ba, a spirit, a new life. So we focus, that doon sa palpak natin, we focus, yung nga yung set your mind on the things of the spirit. So you focus on anong meron ka sa spirit. So bro, up to now, I'm still learning about spirit, soul, and body. So bro, uh, I think... Totally maintindihan lang natin when you go to heaven, but at least know the foundation. Know, know bakit andun. Bakit you know, the word of God sharper than to it. Siya nag-split. So, hindi ka pwedeng nakaupo lang, wala kang yago, then maintindihan mo na yan. It's knowing the word of God. Ano ba yung ni-split? Ano ba yung, di ba, yung, yung hati ng dividing the soul and spirit? Yan ang mga importante. So, for me, talagang lang benefits, laking no, benefits, more than benefits na makita mo yung ginawa ni God. It's out of mahal na mahal na tayo. So, that we understand yung like sabi, yung some verse na Christ in us. Siya yung gagawin ni God din. So, yun, yun, Pastor Macho. Yeah, napaka-foundational yung teaching na ito. If, uh, I think, yung nga, tama yung sabi, brother, first time niyo palang narinig to, first time niyo palang narinig to ngayon, if ano, ulitin niyo ulit, 
kasi itong spirit soul and body napakalaking bagay nito pag naintindihan mo eh kasi dito kasi naguguluhan yung mga tao yun nga uh, katulad ng teaching ni Brother Ron kanina na pinagsasama nila yung soul at spirit kaya titignan nyo kasi we have been made in the image and likeness of God for Father, Son, Holy Spirit ayaw ganun din tatlo kasi lahat ng ibang creation ano lang mga halaman body lang naman meron yan yung animals yes, soul and body pero tayo lang may spirit soul and body like God is Kumbaga, we were made in His image and likeness. At saka yung 5.17, yung 2 Corinthians 5.17, alam niyo ba literal translation nun? It's like you are now a species that has never existed before. Bagong nilalang ka talaga. Alam niyo, bagong nilalang ka. New ka, fresh ka. So yung nakaraan, itapon na natin. Doon tayo mag-focus sa identity natin ngayon kay Christ. Kung ano sinasabi ng Spirit, kung ano sinasabi ng Bible about us, yun tayo. Pag tinignan natin yung Bible, salamin natin yan. Sinabi, you are blessed, you have been prospered, you are healed. Tayo yun. Yun na yun kailangan natin intindihin na pang, pang tatayuan natin yun. At saka yung identity na ito, identity natin kay Christ, hindi kasi kailanman kahit na ilang beses namin ituro sa inyo, hindi nyo naman maano ito eh. Kasi ang mag-reveal niyan sa inyo, Holy Spirit mismo. As you read the Word, it is only through there na makikita nyo, yes, ako nga ito. Holy Spirit ang magbibigay sa inyo. Kasi kahit ilang beses namin sabihin, hindi, healed ka na. Hindi, healed ka na. Kung hindi si Holy Spirit ang magsabi sa inyo na oo nga ako ito, then doon mo lang matatayo. So this is a very foundational teaching. I hope na kung ngayon nyo lang narinig ito. Ulitin nyo, napaka-importante nito. Maging totoo sa mga puso natin. Yan lang. Amen. You know, I, I agree with that. You know, I agree with that, bro. Kasi yung... yung... Hindi kahit naman tayo, eh. Nung seeking time, yeah. seeking... Tuloy-tuloy naman yung seeking. Pero... During those times, we were just, you know, collecting knowledge and learning. May mga preaching, may mga message na kahit lima, anim na beses mong ulit-ulitin, parang, yeah. di ba? Hindi pa rin totally. <laughs> uh, di ba? And you listen. Hindi, parang, like, parang nandyan siya, pero hindi mo mahawakan. Parang, ano, ano ba ito? Parang, kaya talagang kailangan tuloy-tuloy. Kaya tama yung term na gamit ito, kaya progressive talaga as we read the word, as we fellowship with it. Yeah. Tsaka, when you grow in maturity, when you strengthen your foundation, eh, you re- revisit those messages. Mas marami kang nakukuha eh. Yes. You know, may, may mga preaching akong binabalik-balikan kahit na sampung beses ko na narinig. I still get something out of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and parang ngayon, knowing what I know now, mas nag-grasp ko na yung sinasabi. So, yeah, that, you know, that's a great thing. I pray na if there's a message na balik-balikan, yung mga foundational yung before and after the cross, yung spirit, soul, and body, diba? Y- yun yung mga focus natin, identity in Christ. Mm. And, uh, you know, I-, I pray lang na bawat isa na nakikinig ngayon, magka-desire talaga, no, maintindihan, anong meron natin sa spirit at bakit binigay ni God? And the answer to that is, kasi mahal niya tayo. Diba? So, yun lang. Any final remarks? Amen. Brother Eric, Mr. Macho? Amen. Well, okay na. Uh, yun na yun, yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, guys, you know, thanks for tuning in. And um, can I ask you, Pastor Macho, can you close us in prayer tonight? All right. Okay, let's pray. All right. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this time. Maraming maraming salamat, Lord God, for everyone who is watching right now. Na lahat sila ay nagkaroon ngayon. I know that the Spirit has already quickened their hearts kung sino na sila in Christ. Na habang itong araw na ito, itong sumusunod na araw, I pray that they may have this revelation of who they are in Christ, that they are not to walk in the flesh, but walk in the spirit, that they use the word, they meditate on your word, that they may be able to specify, they, they may be able to see what your plan in their life is, Panginoon. Na makita nila na it is only through your word, it is only through you, that the abundant life, the eternal life, ay ma- malalakaran at mahahawak. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. 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 All right. Good night, everybody. Uh, good night, everyone. See you again on Wednesday. God bless you.